Hey there guys, today I'm going to be doing a Q&A video of my rainwater harvesting system. For those of you who don't know, I live in the Arizona desert off of almost 100% rainwater. We don't have a well, we don't have city water, we pretty much just rely on what falls on the roof. So today I'm going to try to answer the most common questions that I've received since I originally did my rainwater harvesting tour video uh, about two or three years ago. And for those of you who haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below, but I'll also do a quick recap before we get on to questions. So let's get started. So as just a basic recap, my rainwater harvesting system essentially is just me collecting water off of my roof and funneling it into gutters around my house, which then funnel into downspouts and run underground until they hit my rain tanks where I store the water, treat the water, and then eventually pump the water to my house for household use. Do we have a well or access to city or town water? No, we don't. When we started getting estimates to build our house, we actually looked into having a well drilled, but we saw that the estimates were well in excess of $10,000 or $15,000 uh, with no guarantee of water. We happen to live in a very rocky environment, and that is actually what led us to start looking into rainwater collection, as well as the fact that my wife's grandparents that actually live in the mountains just behind there uh, have been living off of rainwater for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. The total capacity of this system is roughly 11,000 gallons, and that is comprised of four main tanks. The tan tank back there is my rain tank, and that holds roughly 5,000 gallons and is buried about halfway in the ground. This green tank holds 3,000 gallons, and that green tank holds 2,650 gallons. And then the culvert cistern on the front of my house holds roughly about 1,100 gallons. Those four tanks comprise all of my household water and general use water. I do have other holding capacities in IBC totes and things like that, but I'll touch on that a bit later. What is the total square footage of my roof that I'm collecting rainwater off of? It is somewhere between 3,700 and 3,900 square feet. No, that is not all uh, interior house space. Uh, that includes two really big porches and an extra sized garage. So about half of that square footage is the porches and garage and the other half is the, the living quarters inside. And how does that work in the conversions? Well, the easiest way is to figure for every thousand square feet of collection space, you can get roughly 600 gallons of water per per inch of rain. So what do we do to treat and filter our water and deal with algae growth in our tanks? Well, to be honest, our tanks really never have a problem with algae growth. Uh, they're pretty much impervious to light, but as a just-in-case factor, I do from time to time add just a tiny bit of chlorine to the tanks just to make sure nothing is growing. I know some people are gonna freak out saying, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Uh, well, if you live in pretty much any city, there is probably way more chlorine in your water than is in this water. Additionally, this water is used for everything in the household, but cooking and drinking water gets an additional filtration, and I'll tell you about that now. So what do we use to filter our water? Pretty much all of the water in our house is unfiltered rainwater, sinks, showers, faucets, those are just straight rainwater. We obviously let it sediment out in the rain tank before we transfer it, but other than that, it's just rain. As for cooking and drinking water, that is all done through this. This is a Berkey ceramic gravity powered water filter. The filter is comprised of two separate chambers. The top chamber is where you fill the water and also where you have your ceramic filtration elements. You can have up to four, but I just have two <laughs> because I guess we're cheap. And then that water just percolates down here into perfectly good drinking water. We've been using this system for about eight years now with no problems and we're very, very happy with it. And it really comes out to be uh, pennies uh, per gallon, if not cheaper. Uh, so it's a really cost effective solution as well. 
Do I do any other forms of water collection other than my main house system? Yes, I do. Starting with the sunken greenhouse, I collect water off of that roof and channel it down to my garden where it is stored in two IBC totes. Those of you who have followed that project will know um, I plan on adding another couple of IBC totes to that. Additionally, I also collect water off of my chicken coop roof and channel it into a blue barrel that eventually feeds the chicken waterers. Uh, down at the end of my road, I collect water that runs off of my road into two little retention ponds that services a rainwater garden that I will hopefully soon be upgrading this summer to add some fruit trees to. Um, over in the same area, I also collect water on a billboard tarp collector that channels water into an IBC tote that will also be there to serve those fruit trees and that rainwater garden. And then on the back side of the property, I also collect water in another billboard tarp uh, setup that I don't think I've shown on video, but that collects into a couple of 55 gallon drums that hopefully will get upgraded soon. And that is being developed as kind of like a wildlife waterer. And then on the last note, my shipping container shop, I'm hoping to put another one of these type of cisterns right next to it, which I'll probably have an installation video and all that stuff for you as well. Uh, and I think that's about it. Nope, that's not it. I forgot to mention I also collect water by way of a swale that I built along the front side of my yard and the front portion of my driveway that channels rain runoff water down to my garden area and eventually channels all that water into my fruit tree wells so they get watered every time it rains uh, maybe more than a quarter inch. So probably one of the most common questions I get asked from folks in regard to this system is why I don't have a first flush diverter or a first flush device on my gutters to collect the first few gallons or liters of dirty rainwater while it's cleaning off the roof and not uh, direct that water into my tanks. There's a few reasons why I chose not to install one on my system and the first of those is just simply the cost. I didn't want to buy the extra piping and uh, bell fitting and clean out cap uh, that would have taken to make a good first flush system. Um, additionally, I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to mount it off of uh, my eaves right by the gutters there uh, because obviously if it's going to hold several gallons of water it's going to be pretty heavy um, and I just didn't want to deal with that at the time. Another reason why I chose not to have one on my system is that before I designed this whole setup, I went and toured some places in the city of Tucson that had first flush devices on their systems. And when I checked the insides of their tank, I have still found that some silt and dirt sediment was getting through to their tanks. I'm not sure if the first flushes were being maintained or emptied out regularly, but I kind of started figuring that if a first flush doesn't have, say, 20 to 30 gallons worth of, of roof flush to truly clean out the roof and gutters, it just wasn't going to be worth it to have a single pipe that might only hold four or five gallons. I'm not saying they're not effective, and I really think they are cool systems. Um, I'm just saying it wasn't right for my per, uh, my specific situation. Uh, another reason um, is that I also have my rain tank, which is that big tan tank, and that serves in my mind to collect all of the sediment and in a sense act as my own first flush for the entire system. And the last reason I've chosen to forgo the first flush is that now I take a little bit of a preventative measure and I simply walk around my gutters with a handheld vacuum, a little shop vac, and a PVC pipe and I simply just vacuum out the debris and dust and anything else that might be in the gutters before our rainy seasons. And that usually takes me all of about 10 minutes to do. Is rainwater slightly more acidic than the average groundwater source? Yes. As rain falls through the air, carbon dioxide dissolves within the rain droplets to create what's known as carbonic acid. Now, does that mean the rainwater is acid rain? No, it means it's slightly more acidic on a pH scale. And in the grand scheme of things, do I really think that's a problem? No. I kind of reckon it to a 300 horsepower car versus a 320 horsepower car. Are you really even going to know the difference? Probably not. What do we do about bird poop and other contaminants that might end up on the roof? I don't even worry about it. Every time I've ever gone up there, I have rarely seen any bird poop. And even if anything was up there, it would get sterilized and baked by the sun and its UV rays. And then anything that goes into our bodies is gonna get treated and filtered additionally. So I just think it's not a problem. Have we ever had our water officially tested? No, but I do know that our local Ag Extension office has done studies on homes with similar style roofs that also collect rainwater and the results have always been positive. 
Another really common question that I'm often asked is whether rainwater harvesting is illegal in my area. Thankfully, I can tell you here in Arizona, it is not only legal, but even encouraged. I have heard that some other places that our rainwater harvesting is either regulated, frowned upon, or even illegal in some circumstances. I, for the life of me, I can't understand that kind of uh, political thinking, uh, but I think it is rooted somehow in water rights issues about runoff water going downstream and being available to the next person. But even then, I still think the argument doesn't really hold uh, very strong because if you think about it, before a house or a road or a parking lot existed, that ground was open. So when it rained on that ground, most of the water would probably soak in. And sure, yes, yeah, some of it would run downstream. But the way I look at it is if I'm harvesting the water off of my roof, holding it in a tank, using it on my garden or for my own household needs, I'm putting the majority of that water back where it originally would have gone anyway. The system can be cleaned of any dirt or debris by way of two clean out caps, one located right here. And the other one located right at the base of this tree right here. Another super common question is whether I did all of this installation by myself or did I hire a company to do it? Well, I hope I didn't hire a company because it's definitely not perfect. But yes, I did it all by myself. I did the trenches and laying the pipe and hanging the gutters and uh, placing all of the tanks except for the tan rain tank. I had a guy with a backhoe come over and help me dig the hole to place that about halfway in the ground. And then my father-in-law helped with the culvert cistern on the front. But everything else is pretty much by myself uh, with my wife giving me some moral support and coming out and, and uh, helping from time to time as well. Another one of the really common questions I get from folks is in regard to water conservation. Being that we are on rainwater, we do have a limited water supply, so we definitely do conserve. Uh, things like low flow shower heads, low flow toilets, uh, water efficient appliances all apply. Uh, but what it really comes down to is just having a little bit of mindfulness when you use water and just being a little disciplined. Uh, don't take really long showers. Don't be super wasteful when you're watering plants. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Additionally, we also use gray water to great effect. You'll see that little square back there with a pump on it. That is sitting right above our gray water tank. And what I'm doing right now is just pumping water out of there to water my fruit trees. Okay, so now we are into the more thoughtful segment of the Q&A. <laughs> well, maybe not more thoughtful, but for me it is. Okay, cost and plans for the future. A lot of people ask me about the cost of the system and I've traditionally said like 42 to 4,500 or thereabouts. And that's because I negated including the culvert cistern. But roughly uh, all the, of the three plastic uh, poly tanks were about $3,500. And then adding the culvert cistern brings it to about 4,000 because that was about a $500 install. And then all of the PVC pipes and uh, gutters and those things came out to be about 900 bucks. Uh, so let's just call it 5,000 to be safe. Now that number may scare a lot of people off, but I don't think it should because this number will vary greatly depending on where you are in the country. Uh, for instance, I have to hold a lot of water to make it from one rain to the next. But say someone in Seattle um, or another place might be able to get away with a thousand gallon tank because they're always getting it recharged. Uh, so I think that's definitely an important thing to remember for folks. Now to a lot of you that may seem ridiculously expensive, but for me it was the best option. Um, one thing I do like to point out though is that it is one of those capital expenditures or investments that pays you back over time. In my case, this system has paid for itself over and over and over because you have to remember, I don't have a water bill. I might pay for one or two deliveries of water each year, but the system of, you know, the time that I've gone in months without having a water bill, uh, if you tally up those numbers, you know, say a water bill's 50 bucks or 100 bucks, depending on where you're at, well, over months and months and months and years, eventually that adds up to the fact that my system is paid for. Yes, I will have to maintain it, so that'll definitely be a cost that will happen in the future. These tanks are rated for 25 to 30 years. Sometimes I've heard they can go 40 years if they're taken care of and painted. 
uh, but obviously that will be a capital expenditure I'll have in the future. But you just have to remember everything has a perspective to it and you need to look at it in the right light. But at least until then, I'm not paying a water bill. And that leads me into plans for the future. What plans do I have to either improve this system or add additional rainwater harvesting capabilities? Well, in the short term, it's simply to just add capacity where I can, whether it's an IBC tote or specifically in regards to this shop, I plan on installing another culvert cistern on the western side to not only collect water, but also to give shade. Um, additional to that, I want to install a rain roof, which is kind of like my tarp collectors that I installed uh, this last summer, uh, but it's an idea I got from uh, my buddy Derek at Life Inside a Box. Uh, they installed a huge rain roof with the corrugated roofing to catch potable water for their tiny house and off-grid property. And even additional to that, in more of an earthworks perspective, I want to install a large-scale swale system on the backside of my property to collect all the runoff rainwater into a pond and then plant some perennial plants and fruit trees at the base of that pond or the dam or whatever I end up building. Uh, but that will probably be a year or two out. So if anybody local has a really good backhoe or a mini excavator, let me know. I could definitely use it. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope it was informative. I'm sure I didn't get to everyone's questions, but I did try to focus on the 15 to 20 most commonly asked questions. But if you do have further questions, just put them down below, and I will try to get to them when I get to them. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Give a thumbs up if you like this, and I will see you next time.